So we good? All set. So the special meeting of the Open Space Board of Trustees, May 31st, 2023, will come to order. I will call the roll. Caroline? Present. Michelle? Here. John? Present. Brady? Here. So we have a quorum. All board members are present. So the purpose of the meeting this afternoon is to consider a recommendation to City Council regarding performance concerns of a member of the Open Space Board of Trustees. So uh, I want to set the stage just for a brief moment on the purpose of the meeting, and then I'm going to go through real quickly kind of how we're going to conduct it. Uh, so we're all clear on, on that. So this is a solemn and consequential, consequential occasion. We are here today to determine whether or not, in the view of the trustees of the Open Space and Mountain Parks program, a member of the Open Space Board of Trustees has fulfilled her responsibilities as a member of this board with which the community has entrusted her through appointment by the Boulder City Council to this board. A community entrusts its elected or appointed representatives to perform the duties of the office as required by rule and regulation. When this trust is questioned, it is the responsibility of the governing entity to determine and to decide if there are sufficient grounds to justify termination and removal of that member. Attendance to duty is one of the provisions of performance by a city board member. The duty of this board is to present sufficient evidence which supports a recommendation by the board to the city council that provisions in the city charter and the Boulder Revised Code have not been fulfilled and that a member should be removed for failure to meet the requirements of members of city boards and commissions, or alternatively to determine that insufficient evidence exists to support a recommendation by the board to remove a member from the Open Space Board of Trustees. This meeting will proceed whereby determination by the board will be made to either affirm or reject a board recommendation to city council to remove a member from the board for non-attendance to duty. So the meeting will be conducted as follows. There will be an opportunity for any public comment uh, and we'll go through kind of those uh, procedures real quickly. Uh, then I will entertain a motion or motions uh, for the recommendation to city council uh, there will be a second and then we will proceed with the discussion of uh, the evidence uh, required by those motions. Uh, at the end of that, I will call the question and we'll vote on the motion. And then um, we will look at a draft resolution, which is basically the conveyance to council of the board action, whatever that is, um, so that uh, the board will know what the content of that uh, resolution is uh, when it goes to council. So, and then with that time, because it's a one hour meeting, the time. So, the times um, I've got. Uh, 30 minutes for discussion of the motions, um, five minutes for the vote, uh, 10 minutes for the resolution, and 10 minutes for public comment. Um, I don't know whether I'm not anticipating any public comment, so we can use that time if it's necessary for the discussion component so that um, we can have 40 or 45 minutes actually for the discussion. Depending on how it goes from um, what we had discussed prior um, about the logistics. For me, it would be easier to hear everyone's concerns, grievances, the motion, and then have the time allotted for me, however you wanna break apart 30 minute and 30 minutes um, to be able to respond. Uh, that's correct, we will do that. Okay, cool, thank you. Are there any other questions? I just need to note that I do have a hard stop at one. I squeeze this meeting <laughs> in, and uh, but uh, if, so if I do get up and you are still talking, I am not meaning to be rude. It's just I have a meeting with the city manager's office at one. Okay. So, I also you. have a meeting at one, which I'm taking next door. Okay. So we will try to conclude the proceedings uh, by one o'clock. Janet, I think you probably do too. So, uh, so we will do that. Um, 
So public comment, Sam, do you want to run real quickly through the procedures for that? Yes, I will run us through that. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. For more information about this vision and the community engagement processes, please visit this link. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up to speak using the name they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online. Um, and if you would like to speak, you'll either see a raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen in Zoom. If you don't see that, uh, you can click on the participants uh, icon. You'll see the three dots on the bottom right, and you can select raise hand. I don't see anyone joining by phone, so I can go over those um, instructions if we do see someone join by phone. And those are our meeting rules, so all set there. Thank you very much. Do we have any members of the public who wish to speak? I'm not seeing any hands yet. Seeing and hearing none, we'll close the public comment. And go to, I will entertain uh, motions for the board to consider during its discussion. Uh, I'll make a motion that the City of Boulder Open Space Board of Trustees recommends to the Boulder City Council the removal and replacement of Open Space Board member Carolyn Miller. Thank you. Are there any other motions at this time? I'll second that. Thank you. So uh, any discussion, further discussion on the motion and uh, presentation of evidence to affirm or refute the motion? And as we just said, uh, if we can lay out uh, what the concerns are initially and then give Caroline an opportunity to respond. Yeah, I'll go. Um, give me, I said this. I'm so sorry, Michelle, give me one second because I just want to take notes of everyone's concerns, but I just want to make sure that I'm staying organized. So, okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I want to talk about participation and the lack of participation. And Caroline, I'm going to talk to you in first person directly instead of as a third person here. Yeah. Um, it has been really detrimental to this board um, to not have you partic actively participate in many of our meetings. Um, this, and I mentioned this in the May 10th board meeting, um, but I had concerns about your lack of participation. I personally take my Open Space Board of Trustee appointment very seriously. The community has a tremendous amount of trust in us to, to, to represent them. And when we're not physically present, or virtually present, it shows, quite frankly, a disrespect for that trust that has been given to us by the community. Um, and, and I really believe that not participating on this board is a disservice to our community. Um, and um, not to mention to how we function as a board. Um, I understand that life happens, but there is a pattern here of um, what appears to be a, a lack of respect for the response, your responsibility to this board and to this community. And I um, really thought that this should be addressed. Um, and unfortunately, it's being addressed in this particular way. And so I support the removal of you from our board. 
I have a clarifying question. Okay. That's okay. Um, you said non-participation in board meetings and then after not physically or virtually present. Is your concern with the two absences or is there concern um, for participation when present in board meetings? Um, I have, I have uh, concerns of your track record over the last seven months where you did not participate actively in the November 9th meeting. You did not participate in the November 14th meeting. You did not participate on the April 12th meeting. You did not participate in the May 10th meeting. And then you also did not participate in the May 18th meeting. And which of those are the regularly scheduled meetings? Uh, check your calendar and you can figure that out. Okay, can you list those one more time? I have November 9th, 12th. 9th, 14th. November 9th, 14th, okay. April 12th, May 10th, and May 18th. Two of those meetings, we um, were charged with talking about the budget. That is an extremely important function of this board is to recommend an operating and capital budget. For you to not be participating in that, those very important meetings shows to me that you don't care about what needs to happen, what our fiscal responsibility is as a board. Caroline, one thing I did uh, do as far as following up your request for additional information is to ask Dan to um, compile a list of meetings mm -hmm. um, and the attendance of board members at them. And Dan, I don't, can you can you bring that up? Uh, yeah. So Caroline, to your question, the November 9th was a, I guess what you would call a regular monthly business meeting. The November 14th was a special meeting that was scheduled. Uh, and made uh, an announce to the trustees. Uh, though I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The special meeting was that um, via staff or OSBT um, quorum? That was by OSBT. Yeah. If you had participated or watched the video of the November 9th meeting, you would have known in advance that meeting was scheduled. Also, there was a public notice and an email correspondence about that meeting. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. You. Okay. And April 12th was a regularly monthly scheduled business meeting, May 10th was a regularly scheduled monthly business meeting. May 18th was a scheduled uh, OSBT field trip. I think those are the five that you asked about. So, so the, I think there's a total of 10 events that have happened since November 9th through May 18th in which the board was notified of them uh, and One, two, three, four, five. And then there was a February 22nd study session, uh, as well as uh, in addition to those other monthly business meetings. So there's second study session. There's November 9th, November 14th, December 11th, January 11th, February 8th, February 22nd, March 8th, April 12th, May 10th, May 18th. Oh, I see. So the 10 was just every meeting, and then we listed the yeah, and then yeah, exactly. Okay, gotcha. exactly. Thank you. We got rained out on that last one. It was a real home dinger, wasn't it? Well, you know, they got my car out. We covered the car. What I appreciated about that meeting is that even though it rained, we came to this building and we used that time to talk extensively about the city's um, progression and 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 managing prairie dogs. That no, was still a good meeting. I'm just trying to bring a little levity to the situation, but. <laughs> was I think that, that Michelle's right. That was a, an excellent opportunity to interact with staff, and uh, not only on Prairie Dogs, but in general. So it, was, it was an important meeting. The other meeting uh, that I think uh, that I was concerned about, Caroline, was the April 25th um, public open house, which was uh, on uh, trail projects. Uh, that are anticipated or planned for the for this coming year. So, in my recollection, I'm so sorry. You said open house. Yeah. Say the um, the date. I just switched. The 25th of oh. April. So, okay. my recollection is of is actually of eleven, you know, regularly well eleven scheduled. The regularly scheduled are the monthly official monthly meetings. Uh, you were able to attend five of 
uh, 11, which it is a concern. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the expectations for board participation, especially on this board, which is one of the premier boards of the city, are the expectations are far higher than that. And uh, our conduct, um, both in person and in video and participation is scrutinized, uh, I think, very carefully by the community and is uh, something uh, for me in particular is uh, the board uh, really needs to be cognizant of that and pay particular attention to it. We are representing the community and their expectations are that we participate as their representatives. Uh, there are other... I've got a comment. Did okay. you want to say something, John? Uh, sure, sure. In, in addition to the concerns around attendance. Uh, so sorry, John. So um, the open house for the 25th of April um, and, and the way that our participation looks outward to the community, I just want to make sure that I'm writing down all the concerns. Was there another point that you have that I that I missed that wasn't one of those two big ones? Uh, no, those are those are sufficient. Okay. It's the you know the community's expectations and uh, scrutiny of our participation. Okay, give me one second, John. Okay, sorry, thank you. Go ahead. It's okay. Um, in addition to concerns around attendance, you know, I'll echo uh, what Dave and Michelle said. Um, you know, the public puts a lot of trust in us to, you know, uh, you know dig in on issues, um, you know, be truthful about information we share. Um, and I'm concerned that you disrupted the November 2022 OSBT meeting, making what seemed to be very serious allegations against staff and public officials. I'm concerned that you haven't worked to bring clarity or resolution to those accusations, which has created a sense of unrest on the board that has made it difficult to move forward and do our work together. Um, just because that was a, a well-worded sentence, can you say it again? Work to create, um, it sounded like you had read it and I just wanna make sure that I get all of it. Do you, clarity or resolution? Is this, going to be recorded and accessible to the public yes. after the fact right. so we can get verbatim. Right. Brady, do you, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a, a comment or two. Um, I can't finish writing. <clears throat> Actually, yes, I guess I'll just, keep, I'll just go ahead. So, Kieran, um, I enjoyed our lunch together. That's the only interaction that we've had. Um, it, as, as has been previously stated in this, the, the, my first three meetings, I enjoyed our lunch together. It's clear to me that you're really passionate and knowledgeable about open space. Um, you, you watch every city council meeting, is that right? I watch a lot of meetings. <laughs> yeah. So that level of dedication and it is, is exemplary. And, um, but I'm gonna say this, I think between the attendance and, and a number of people mentioned that, that November meeting to me before, I joined this board. I think that you, there's been a, a, a lack, a loss of confidence in your ability to serve in this board. It's a volunteer board. I think there's other ways for you to direct your passion and knowledge to help with open space and, and the system. And um, you know, I don't know if it's entirely appropriate, but I would just say there's a time to fight, Caroline. And there's a time to just say, you know what, my time here has run its course and it's time to step aside. And I think this, that time, in my opinion, and, and my advice to you as a human, one human being to another, is that that time has come. I don't think this is a time to fight. I think this is a time to say, you know, I've, I've served a, a good amount of period of time here. Uh, at this point, my peers and other, apparently other people in the city don't have a, the confidence in me to continue to lead. And that's, that's an indication that it's time for me to exit stage left, take a bow and look for other ways to contribute to the city. So uh, while I know that there's a motion on the floor to forcibly, you know, to, to make a recommendation to city council, which has the power, as we've seen in this uh, <clears throat> memo in front of us, to remove someone, you, Caroline, have the power to uh, self-determination here. Um, and just to say, you know, it's been a good run and I'm gonna leave. Now, of course, you don't have to do that, but that's my recommendation to you. And my observation is someone who's only been here for a scant 
a few meetings. You know, I think the fact that we're having this meeting is just, it's sad. It's, it's not the way that I don't think anyone wants to go. So not how I want to be spending my afternoon. I can't imagine it's fun for you. I think the, the quickest and, and best way for everyone involved is for you to, to, to say thank you and to step down. That's my recommendation. And that's my comment. Thank you. Are there any other comments or points for the discussion before Caroline has a chance to respond? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about, I appreciate that, Brady. Um, I think that's, there's a lot of wisdom in that advice. And I hope that you will take that to heart, Caroline. Um, yes, yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about the November 9th meeting as well. Um, it, it, you know, we're all professionals here. I, you know, and a lot of us are executives at other organizations. Um, this is, I think, my fourth board, uh, um, volunteer board that I've sat on. Um, and, and the way a board functions is really important to how we serve in our communities, how we interact with each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis, how we are productive in a group is really important. And um, you know, in the November 9th meeting, you, you started that meeting out with a pretty long monologue. Um, and it definitely disrupted the flow of our meeting, for sure. Um, and, and so your opening monologue um, made serious accusations about fellow public servants, people who you know, give their time and their soul to this community. And, you know, you made very serious accusations. Um, I did not hear from you that that was coming. I didn't hear anything afterward from you about how you wanted to see it resolved and, and what you felt those issues were. Now, in any board that I have served on, in any job that I've served on, we, we have had those conversations. That doesn't come from left field. We work together as professionals to come to resolution. If there, you know, if, if you're feeling a certain way, we work together to, to get resolution. That did not happen. Um, in the January 11th meeting, I asked you if, um, if any of those things have been brought to conclusion. This is when we're about to start our, our e-bike deliberation. And, you know, there was a lack of transparency about what, what you were feeling and what you said. Um, with these accusations, and uh, you deflected that. You did not respond to that. That was your opportunity to bring us into the loop of what was going on, and you did not take that. There has also been many opportunities in the last six or seven months to have that conversation with one or more of us. To my understanding, that hasn't happened. It definitely hasn't happened to, with me. Um, and you know this this has created a serious amount of distrust with you, and quite frankly, um, some dysfunction on this board. It's created some toxicity. Um, to be honest, I'm afraid to have a conversation with you one on one because I don't know what you're going to say to me afterward, or what you're going to open up in a meeting and 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 uh, slander me about. So I, I just that's not a healthy board environment. It's not a healthy work environment. Um, and, you know, I, I think that we have collectively as a board and a staff spent way too much time talking about your lack of participation and um, the, the dysfunction that you have caused to this board. And, you know, I, I think now is the time um, to act on that. You, you get what you tolerate, and I don't think that we should tolerate this any longer. And so that is why I'm in support of Joan's motion to request council to remove you. And is a clarifying question okay? Mm -hmm. or a couple. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is what you were saying for the record that you feel that you are afraid to talk to me at some point in time out of a meeting or in a meeting? I, I am, yeah, I, I just, I'm, I, yeah. I mean, in a public meeting, I, I feel like- And the reason, okay. I'm sorry. Because of the accusations that you made to public servants, which seem to come from left field, I don't wanna give you any fodder for you to have any conspiracy theories about me. If I say one thing, I don't know that you're gonna like say at minute 103 that Michelle said the sky is blue and when and you're gonna say, well, that, that, that sky is actually, you know, purple. 
okay, I'm colorblind, so it probably is, you know, so, um, but I, I don't know how things will be misinterpreted by you. And I don't trust that you will come to talk to me and, and ask me to clarify that instead of going and interrupting a business meeting and making accusations in front of the, the, the community. Um, and so, so it's established that you're afraid to talk to me after a meeting and the reason for that was slander. I am concerned about how you op you operate without professionalism. And then my next question is, um, you said that for the November 9th meeting that I had a long monologue at the beginning of the meeting and serious accusations were made. Can you list those? I cannot list them because quite frankly, I do not understand what you were trying to say but they did seem quite harmful. And that's why I would have appreciated some level of clarity on them. But they they were, I, I, I think a number of people in the community have replayed that video and tried to make sense of that. And I'm not, I'm not sure that I certainly haven't been able to. Hopefully I can be helpful for that today. But, but what I hear you saying is that you do not understand what I was saying at that meeting. I do not believe that you are acting with professionalism in that meeting. So can I, um, I'm just trying to make sure that I really understand each concern. So should I take that off of this list? Because what I wrote down was that you do not understand what I was saying in that moment. Is that true? Caroline, I, I, you're gonna like really make this extremely painful for yourself. And I really do not like this line of questioning. I do not trust you is the point. And I, I, you made some serious accusations of public servants in that, in that meeting. And you have not come to us to help get that resolved. Oh, again, so, hopefully I can clarify that today, but so I, I just wanna I make sure, I'm sorry, a, it's important to say this. I wanna make sure that it's known for the meeting that it, you're saying, that I was making serious accusations, but you will not say what those are. It appears that you made serious accusations, which are on the record and can be viewed by anyone on video. And again, hopefully I, I can clarify cannot today. intellectually understand what you were trying to say. Okay. I think only you are the <laughs> only person who could figure that out. Okay. So what I'd like to do now, uh, Caroline, is to uh, move the conversation to you. Um, so that, and thank, thank you all for um, your comments. Um, I appreciate those. Uh, so you will now have an opportunity uh, to say whatever you'd like. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for everyone being here. Um, even if it's a tough conversation, I am, I'm glad that we're having it. Um, I feel like I have a couple of questions um, for, City Attorney, just regarding the grounds for removal, but I'm not sure if at this moment it would be the right time um, because I just want to understand the evidence presented. So like in the opening remarks, it was, we're going to talk about what happened. We're going to present evidence um, from what we bring forward in the discussion. We'll decide on our motion, right? Right. Um, removal can be for any cause, right? So we know that one across the board, but I just want to make sure um, that I'm understanding the rules properly. As far as attendance to duty, there's two missed scheduled meetings that happened the last two consecutive meetings. Am I missing something in the rules outside of that for requirements? I do think you're missing the point. Attendance is not simply here present. Attendance to duty is a term that says you are not serving your job. It's not so two part. As a, well, there is that's part what, of it. Part of it yes. is, of that ordinance is the the pure attendance, mm -hmm. but part of it is attendance to duty. Are you doing your job on the sport as as dictated by the sport? You're not, Caroline. Yeah, I think, Caroline, um, as far as a regular scheduled meeting, the, the, uh, the Boulder Revised Code calls for three, or identifies three consecutive missed meetings as uh, one of the provisions for um, 
attendance to duty or non-attendance to duty. I think uh, certainly what I have uh, been most uh, emphatic about is that there are a number of, of meetings or instances or opportunities for board members to participate in the community. Um, and that's the expectation that I as chair have for board members as well as I think the community has for board members. And so I'm not limiting our discussion to three consecutive regularly scheduled meetings missed. Um, for me, it, it looks like a pattern that, you know, less than half of the meetings in the last six months or so uh, you've been able to attend. And, and I understand that there are uh, extenuating circumstances for, the, for that. Um, However, I do think that uh, the community rightfully expects that we are fulfilling the requirements of our participation, even though this is a voluntary board. So uh, that's, that's my um, perspective from uh, the language that's in the Boulder Revised Code, as far as the, this board is concerned. Okay, so I will speak now um, and I will try and do so. Um, as concisely as possible. Um, it has been noted that my execution is not great all the time. So it seems like that is established. So if it's not um, completely perfect, I'll, I'll apologize in advance for that. So what I wanna talk about is um, just a quick recap of my time on the board. I'll give um, my explanation for our November meeting, hopefully suggest some solutions, um, and then I don't plan to add my own motion. Um, I think that it'll just be, be my point of view to the motion um, that's been presented by the rest of the board. Um, and, and I think that that'll be fine and it'll be easy to follow and, and clear. So when I became an open space board of trustees, I had seen a message on the local next door app that said, um, come in if you would like to learn more about city participation and, and volunteer. So that was what I did. I went to that meeting that day. One of the open space board of trustee members was um, at the meeting just to facilitate um, any community members interest in participating on a board. And then it was from that meeting that I decided to um, apply for the open space board of trustees. I was appointed in 2020 um, and have loved my time being on the board. And I feel that the oath that we took um, is something that I, I take incredibly seriously and I've been honored every moment to be on this board, um, as well as what our city charter for the Open Space Board of Trustees um, asked for us to uphold, which is, um, protect and preservation of our land um, as really the big focal point of why OSBT was established when it was. So that's a little bit about me. Um, the November 9th meeting, um, and I'm my apologies to the public and anyone else, if the message was um, cryptic and unable to be read through the lines, um, or if it was easily read through the lines. Um, I feel that the feedback that I have gotten from people on the board as well as other people in the community, because a lot of people um, were tuned into that video, um, is I've heard two different things. Um, and they're both very distinct and, and it's difficult for me to understand how it could be both, which was why I asked Michelle to clarify. So I've had people come to me and say, I could not understand what you were saying. It was it was very cryptic. Um, and frankly, we don't know what you were talking about to any level or to any extent. At the same time, I'm also being told that, as Michelle said, serious allegations um, were being made during that meeting. Um, it caused, um, again, just to use Michelle as an example, distrust on the board. Um, and that the and and something that I have been um, told by Dave, and it seems like Brady said it as well. The execution was poor, um, and 
there wasn't a lot of um, communication prior with other board members um, to see if there could be a better resolution than um, one of the OSBT board members going rogue. So the reason that I said what I said at the beginning of that meeting was that from my watching of city council meetings, as well as the main additional meetings, which would be RAB, TAB, and planning board, it was my perception and still is that there has been overreach by council onto this board. It could also be said that there has been interference by council onto this board. I felt like what I was seeing and hearing moving forward was going to affect what a vote by OSBT means on any particular agenda item that was brought forward. My concern was that we were going to vote on that particular agenda item. Um, and I also want to be clear that while there is a specific agenda item that was there, it could be any agenda item. Um, it, it wasn't specific to what it was. What I was referring to was what I felt was overreach and interference by members of city council into the votes for OSBT and what OSBT is designed to do. I felt like that vote or any subsequent ones related to that issue were going to be thwarted if the vote was not in line with what um, with what was wanted by, by other um, members of the community. The vote was brought to OSBT because that was where the vote resided. <coughs> OSBT- Can you please clarify what vote you're talking about? I'm, I'm talking about um, e-bikes. I think everything with that is related to e-bikes. And what I said um, as far as it could be anything is that the agenda item, again, could, could literally be any of the topics that we cover but that was where I felt the overreach was. So I um, felt that moving forward, that that vote would be discounted. The vote would not stick. And if the vote did not go for a yes for um, the agenda item that was being brought forward, that it would be subverted. It would not, the vote would not hold. And I had a lot of um, concerns related to the to the ethics of what that would mean for the board if a vote was brought forward. It was not a decision that was well liked as votes are, you know, just like our hard conversations. Sometimes it's just not pleasant and that's, you know, what we're here for. Um, that, that there would be issues and that opening that up would then begin to create a lot of problems within OSBT and, and what that power and authority actually is for the board members during their time on the board. I think that tomorrow's city council meeting related to e-bikes shows very blatantly what I what my fear was at that November 9th meeting um, has kind of come full circle and that is exactly what's happening. Um, as I said before, I, I'm very sorry for anyone in the community if my execution was poor. Um, and I'm sorry to the board members if they felt left out. I did not feel like I had enough time to act in any sort of way that could have any sort of resolution before that meeting began. And it was really important to me really not so much for my time on the board, but for future OSBT members on the board to know and understand how important the votes are and that they remain what they are as highlighted and outlined by the city charter. Um, let me take a pause and look at my notes so I don't. Forget and move on. Um, I'm going to keep going. If there are any 
clarifying questions to what that is, um, we can we can circle back around, but I'll try and keep talking. Um, and just a quick time check, it's 1239. I was just looking at that because um, I'm going to try and maybe seven more minutes. Um, I felt like that was interference into our board. I feel like there are other acts of overreach or interference or omissions as they relate to the duties and responsibilities of OSBT um, that have been kind of inching forward, if you will. Um, you know, I think COVID and our emergency measures maybe kicked it off, um, maybe it didn't, but I think that that is um, something that, that needs to be looked into. So for the motion um, that I believe will have four yes votes for the motion that OSPT presented um, to be taken up by city council and for them to do a vote to remove me from the OSPT board. Um, I'm going to ask that an official inquiry goes into this removal because I think that the overreach and the interference and the omissions stack up enough that I believe it goes beyond what could be considered circumstantial evidence um, in some cases to, to really address what might be um, a, a serious concern. Um, I have concerns, actually, let me just get on my right page for this so I can say what, what my concerns are. So because I do watch city council meetings and because I do watch other board member meetings, um, I find that there are a lot of community members in Boulder that are exceptionally smart people and that are willing to bring forward um, to their meetings really tough and difficult conversations. And I have, I have watched some of them in awe at the well-read, well-thought-out, well-spoken manner in which there can be civil discourse or a dissent on rules um, and, and the grounds and standing that Boulder community members will, will make to um, really stick by the point that they're trying to make. Um, I think that that's really important um, for us to be able to do that. And I feel like since the November 9th meeting, again, which I'm, I'm happy to, to say many times um, that it was executed poorly, that I feel like to use an analogy, what I was trying to say to city council or, or really anyone that would try and interfere with the votes for OSBT and, and what was being brought forward is, um, again, just for an analogy, was that it felt like there was serious lines being crossed for people coming into our sandbox. And when I spoke about those, I felt like at that time, there was a lot of writing on the wall of how this was going to play out through time. And that not only was I not going to be allowed to say, I feel like there's interference into our sandbox. The reason that I did so between the lines, if you will, um, was because I knew that I was perhaps poking a bear, if you will. I'm saying something to someone that has more authority than me, that is you know, more powerful than me, that is bigger than stronger than me, um, you know, in the context of, of the political arena, if you will, um, because I'm, I'm not really politically affiliated in this town. Um, I just wanted to be on this board to serve the community and, and I love our open space just like everyone else does. Um, so I felt like there was a lot of go along to get along and the moment that I said, um, you know, I, I feel like this is a problem, that it became, well, maybe Caroline needs to be removed. Maybe the problem isn't the problem of overreach and interference into this board. Maybe it's that Caroline's just kind of not following um, the normal path and agenda, and, and therefore that's going to be a problem. Um, and again, what I was saying is something that's coming full circle and is the reason that Michelle um, will be at tomorrow's meeting and the reason that Dave will be at tomorrow's meeting. Um, and I have really serious concerns for that overreach. That's the word that I'm, I'm using to describe it. Um, 
that it's going to affect OSBT as a whole now and forevermore. Yeah. Okay, clarifying question. Did anyone ever tell you you can't say something? Did, did someone actually curtail your ability to communicate in a meeting? Because it, it seems to me, you know, sometimes we feel political pressure because we can kind of sense what's going on in the board or council or from, from you know, uh, public comment. And, and that being said, like this board has certain authority, the staff have certain authority, ultimately council calls things up, they vote. Your sense was that it was gonna be a contentious vote that maybe council would disagree. How is that, how is that overreach versus just a, 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 de a public decision making process that's sometimes painful and scary, can be scary to, to speak yeah. to, to disagree yeah. with people who are further up the food chain right. than you are, but we kind of signed up for that. I mean, to me, it just sounds like the the beauty and the mess of democracy playing out. And and unless somebody explicitly said, Carolyn, you can't say this, or I just think this is just a democratic process playing out. No, no one said that I couldn't say it. Um, and I think that I spoke, um, again, word cryptically or in between the lines because I, I was timid to do what I did. I, I certainly wasn't, um, you know, feeling like I was going to be a hero at the, at the end of it. Um, it felt scary to do it, but I did feel like that vote was not going to be um, respected. But council has the ability to, I mean, they haven't done it yet, but they, that's their right. I mean, that's, we don't, we don't get to decide what happens on open space in certain circumstances. We do, I mean, you know, we, we all know how the decision-making process works. I, I'm just trying to figure out if you felt intimidated and had some feelings, but ultimately that's kind of part and parcel of the job. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't see evidence from what you've said of, of overreach or malfeasance. I just think it was a tough vote and, and, and to your credit, you voted your conscience and it went across, it cut across the grain. And sometimes that's what we do. So did Dave. So, um, yeah. so Caroline, let me uh, jump in. Uh, you've just got about three more minutes. So if you can conclude, uh, that would be great. Um, and I will say that uh, we focused or you focused your comments on the November 9th uh, board meeting. Um, my concerns, uh, quite frankly, in addition to that are just the attendance and kind of the prospect of going forward. Because again, I think that the, the functioning of this board from my perspective is extremely important and that requires you know a full board to participate and that's my concern. So if you could maybe take a couple minutes and speak to that. that so I, I think that there's been overreach um, that again could go back um, as far as the emergency measures. Um, I think that there's been overreach related to the appointment of OSBG trustees. And um, during the meeting where um, Brady was appointed as the new OSBT member, it was said during that meeting um, with city council that there, that there has been a lot of solicitation for board members from that meeting. Um, and I feel like it's, it's to the detriment of OSBT. Um, so what can you I define heard, solicitation in this context? Yeah. So I think that it's perfectly um, normal, welcoming, accepting for anyone in the community to encourage anyone else um, to participate um, in any boards. I know that many city council members, past and present, have done that um, for a variety of boards, um, as well as board members trying to solicit, refer other people to the board. The problem with that comes where if the ask is, is related and somehow integrated um, with the way that the votes can or will go on the board. So I feel like there have been appointments um, where council has has overreached, has, has specifically sought out community members that will align with viewpoints. Um, and that is the reason that they're on the board. Um, in that meeting, city council said that they were having a very low turnout um, for board appointments, that it was um, unique and it was something that they were going to look at. Um, so my my recommendations um, to city council 
are um, related to that, and, and hopefully it can be solution based. Um, I think that there are findings of a fact that really should be established. Um, if it becomes that city council finds removing me is warranted, um, I think that an official inquiry regarding that would be important. Um, I think that the, the language surrounding the rules doesn't really, from what I've heard, um, hold any grounds for my dismissal. Um, and in fact, I think that I'm, I'm not really being removed by my fellow trustees. I think that there are outside sources um, that are pushing for this removal so true. more so um, than, than the OSBT trustees. And I think that it would be really easy um, to, to see um, if those allegations are in fact fact or um, if they're not. I think that asking other board members or excuse me, other boards um, if this type of overreach is being found on their boards would be really good information for city council to have um, and being able to understand what's going on, why appointments are low, how that, how those appointments might relate to my removal. Um, and if there truly is interference within the boards happening or not, um, I, I don't have all the answers, but I, I would like, um, there to be some outreach to figure out um, really what's going on. So Can you to try and- one minute to conclude your comments? Yeah, so to try and wrap up, um, I'm asking that the vote be no to remove me as an OSBT trustee, um, that there is an inquiry pursued into the overreach or interference into the official meetings of OSBT, that there is an inquiry pursued into the nature of any current OSBT trustee, um, by, by any nature um, or any manner needed um, regarding solicitation of appointments or any conflict of interest that may be present. Um, and if there are violations or improper conduct surrounding that, um, that those be noted and, and actions um, be taken. Would you like to make that as a subsequent motion? That's what I was going to say. I, I I don't know if it's necessary to do that. I I assume since this is so rare and not normal that this meeting is going to be watched. So, um, well, I don't know. Maybe should we ask Janet if if since I will not be voting to ask City Council to remove myself, should I have another motion or should the board since that is their motion, have that, and, and they just have my position on that motion. Um, this is Janet Michaels with the city attorney's office for the record. You do, you, you may vote on this removal. So you're not precluded in any manner from voting to, if you wanted to file a, some kind of a motion to have the board support the city attorney's office looking into allegations, you know, that's something that you could do, but it doesn't require an action of the board. No one would second by motion. So you're going to be. Any, so, any yeah, board, so it'll just be. Any board or commission member has the um, right to request an advisory opinion, opinion from the city attorney. And may I direct you to um, Boulder Revised Code section 2-7-12. And that's something that any board or commission member, member of the public or task force employee can initiate. But it wouldn't, it, it would be more formal than just asking in a meeting. I mean, you want to have something in writing and explain what you believe the grounds are. Okay. And then the city attorney's office is charged by that ordinance to look into. It. Okay, thank My you. My understanding though, Janet, is that the city attorney's office has reached out to Caroline on several occasions in, uh, in this regard and gotten no response. Is that correct? Yes. So I wanted to do a quick time check. We yeah. are running out of time and okay. um, I appreciate what you, we still have a resolution to get through. All right, 30 seconds. All right. Caroline, I feel like I've joined the club here. You insinuated that somehow my appointment was inappropriate in some way. I volunteered. I've been thinking about serving on this board for over a decade. 
I volunteered to be on this board. And, and somewhat to my surprise, I was appointed in my first year. You have absolutely shown no evidence of, of any overreach or improper conduct. You are confusing democratic processes and city politics with malfeasance. You are disrupting the normal course of action. We're here for open space. You just wasted an hour of my life. All of ours. So it is absolutely clear after this, my first meeting with you, that you are disrupting the, gem the basic processes of managing open space. Makes me kind of mad. I've had enough and this is, I've been, I'm one meeting in, that's it. So I think it is warranted. Um, whether I'm right or not, who knows? You know, that would be the, the reason for the inquiry, but I do believe it's warranted. So I'm going to call the question. Um, so we have in front of us a, a motion uh, and the second is if there's no further discussion, uh, I will do a roll call vote on the motion. Uh, then subsequently and quickly, we'll take a look at the re resolution, which will be the conveyance document to, to council to make sure that the board uh, is in agreement on the language or if there's a, uh, a need to edit the language, change it or whatever, uh, we'll, we'll do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call the roll. Uh, Caroline. No. Michelle. Yes, I vote for recommending the council to remove Caroline Miller. John. Uh, I vote yes for removal. And Brady. I vote yes for removal. And I vote yes as well. Uh, so that vote is passes uh, four to one. Uh, with Caroline uh, as the nay vote. Can we pull up the resolution language real quickly? Can we make that enlarge? <laughs> <laughs> So this is the conveyance document that uh, I am proposing that the board approve uh, to send to city council on the action that we just took. Can you continue to scroll up, Megan? So are you asking, so for, for me, just for B, um, there, there was no failure to attend for the November 9th meeting. I don't, I, I don't know that. Um, if you're argue. voting against this, um, are, are you you wanting to contribute to this? We can debate these if you've had your opportunity to have your debate, but you squandered it, um, but not by not addressing your own issues. You've instead decided to derail that Time, that conversation into your theories. And this is, but this is what we do right now. We, the motion language up, this is to edit what we're seeing on the screen. Is that right? Yes, and you were not voting for this, I, I assume. My vote, my vote was no. Right, as far as the November 9th meeting, uh, Caroline, from my perspective, you excused yourself before the meeting actually uh, took place other than it was uh, gaveled to order. And so, yeah, in my opinion, uh, that was a missed meeting. Okay. And my my reason for leaving the meeting because I was there um, was related to, to the substance. Right, um, which is irrelevant because this meeting Michelle, is about your removal, you? Caroline. This is about your removal. It is not about your theories. So let's proceed and uh, make a determination on whether this board approves this language in the resolution that will go to the city council based on our action. I'll motion that we approve the resolution as written. I'll second it. Uh, I'll do another roll call. <laughs> uh, Caroline? No. Michelle? Yes. John? Yes. Brady? Yes. And I vote yes to. So the language in the resolution to council is approved uh, four to one.
with Caroline Aposi. So um, in, in conclude, that concludes um, this meeting's uh, functions. And uh, before I gavel it to adjournment, I, I do want to thank everyone for their participation. This is, uh, these are always, this is an extremely difficult uh, situation. And I do want to say, Caroline, uh, I, I, as I've told you, I'm greatly saddened that we're at this point I val valued your contributions uh, over the last four years and sincerely hope that uh, you, you would be able to continue. But um, that's not the case, but in the, I want you to know that uh, I did value and others valued uh, your contributions and participation. Thank you, that's very nice to So with that, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.